Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long time since we've done a classic TFL mashup review, and today we're going to bring it back because behind me are two cars that don't directly compete. One is the brand new Toyota RAV4 Adventure, and the other one is our long-term Subaru Outback. Now, of course, the Adventure directly competes with the Forester, but these two cars do have a lot in common. First and foremost, they are both the brand's most popular cars. Also, they started about the same amount of money, and let's face it, they are kind of, sort of aimed at the same demographic. So coming up right now, we're gonna find out how they're the same, how they're different, what's new, what's not, and which one of these two is the better vehicle. And Tommy, are you ready to help me? Yes. So underneath the hoods here, we have some similarities and we have some differences. Let's start with the similarities. They're both four cylinders and they're both exactly two and a half liters. But there are several differences as well. For example, in the RAV4, the cylinders go up and down and in the Outback, they go left and right. And then there's the horsepower. In the RAV4, 203 versus 175 in the Outback, but torque is very similar. 184 pound-feet in the RAV4, 174 pound-feet in the Outback. Now the driving experience is pretty similar despite the fact that this has a CVT and this has an 8-speed automatic. So Tommy, in some ways we're comparing apples to oranges because our long-term Subaru is kind of the base price one, yep. whereas this is the top-of-the-line adventure. So you get a lot more goodies in here and it shows. The interior is a lot nicer, you get heated and cool seats, you get a much bigger dashboard display, yep. you get a sunroof, um, it's just a much better option car. But what you don't necessarily pay for, which you also get in this RAV4, is it feels more solid. It feels better screwed together to me. Yeah, I agree. I think it feels like it's out of one piece of Toyota, right? I mean, it's, it's all kind of one chunk. But this is very similar to the Subaru, right? The little four-cylinder that could, but really doesn't. It's especially buzzy in this RAV4. That's the one issue I have with the driving experience. It's incredibly refined, but this engine just kind of it just kind of moans along, and even though this has a traditional 8-speed automatic, it doesn't feel any more refined than that CVT. No, no, it feels rather buzzy and like it's a car in search of two more cylinders. Right, I, I agree. <laughs> you know, style-wise, these cars are remarkably similar, and stay with me on this. They're both kind of that off-road rugged look, and what I mean is it feels like somebody took the same parts and just put them on in different order. Look, they've got almost identical chin spoilers. The two grills are basically inverses of each other. This one is an upside down version of that one. This car has bigger fog lights, but that car has smaller fog lights. Stylistically, when you look at them from the outside, yes, they are different. But in terms of the bits and pieces, it's pretty much the same and perhaps the most closely related part of these cars is a ground clearance. This one 8.7, that one 8.6 inches. All right, Tommy, and I think uh, we should do complete full disclosure. We like to be transparent at TFL. We actually don't have the opportunity to compare the RAV4 to the Forester because Subaru doesn't give us cars right. to review. In fact, we had to buy this car. This is our long-term Outback in order to have a Subaru to review. Uh, and a couple interesting things that come up in ownership, right? First of all, we've already got a couple of recalls. Yep. Uh, and that's kind of unfortunate. This screen has been recalled because it glitches out. Yep. Uh, the miles to empty apparently is often wrong, so that's been recalled. So in less than three months of ownership, we've already put 48 hundred miles on it, but we've already got two recalls. Yeah, I mean, and that's um, unfortunate. But as a car, I, I've really enjoyed the Outback. Yeah, I think there's a sense of kind of lightness. It's kind of like a old family friend dog, you know what I mean? It's, it's like the dog that is always ready to go out and have fun and go on adventures with you and always willing to kind of have a, a, a warm shake of the tail when you come home, right? That's what it feels like. It just feels like an old family friend. Uh, it's very easy to live with. Uh, everything in here is very intuitive. It's super friendly in terms of kind of 
the seating position, right? And there's nothing that gives the fence here. Now, Tommy, obviously the Outback is a bigger car, so there's a lot more room on the inside, but which interior do you like better? I've got this really nice eight inch screen. In terms of the interior, it's kind of basic. Not a lot of style. In a way, it's a sea of black punctuated by some chrome accents. Of course, this is not the high-end version. It's not the 3.6 liter, and that is the more expensive version. In fact, this car cost about $10,000 less than that car, but just in terms of kind of stylistically, which one do you like better? Well, this new RAV4 has a really cool mix of materials and designs. We even have some orange accents. I really like the soft touch materials across the dashboard and along the doors. We have an eight inch display in the middle, similar to the Outback, but also seven inch cluster display. So it's a lot nicer on the interior of the RAV4 as you'd expect for $39,000, but it's, um, it's not quite as nice as I'd like for about $40,000. I'd like to see uh, a little bit more in terms of technology and maybe a little bit less plastic. Yeah, but it's orange, Tommy, it's orange, and I've got black and silver. Fuel economy has become the overriding factor, at least for a manufacturer's point of view. So for them, the fact that this gets really good fuel economy for a car that can see four comfortably and five in a pinch, right, is what really matters. And you're going to pay a price for that, and that price is a small four-cylinder. Yeah, I agree. And what's funny is the actual sporty version of this car, the one that has more oomph, yeah. is the hybrid. Yeah, I know. That's crazy that the hybrid actually is the performance version. What do you think of the steering? It's really good. I think it's, it's super um, tight, and I also have different drive modes, so in sport mode, I can adjust it, and it feels like it gets a little bit heavier. The cool thing is the adventure package is kind of the go anywhere package. So it really is targeted at the Subaru buyer that wants to go out and explore the trailhead and the like. And that's why we're doing this video because this RAV4 is directly targeted at the Subaru buyer uh, in the Forester. Yeah, for sure. Not necessarily the Outback, but what I think is it's the Outback too? Yeah, but what is relevant is that these are both manufacturer's best-selling vehicles. The Outback, like we said at the beginning of this video, is a physically larger car. It's about eight inches longer than the RAV4. However, the RAV4 has a bigger trunk, about two cubic feet larger. However, follow me over here. If I fold down the second row of seating in the RAV4 and the Outback, you'll quickly find that the Outback is quite a bit larger, about four cubic feet more room in the Subaru. Of course, Subaru has their symmetrical all-wheel drive, and that's a really fancy way of saying this car is all-wheel drive all the time. It also has X mode, which allows the magic gremlins to appropriate power to whichever wheel has traction, and it also has hill descent control, but that has become pretty standard nowadays. Now, the Toyota takes it up at least a level or two. This particular RAV4 is the adventure trim, which means we have Toyota's torque vectoring all-wheel drive system with multi-terrain select. Not only can this RAV4 decouple the rear axle altogether, it has several different drive modes, ranging from a sport to an economy mode, plus a mud and sand, rock and dirt, a snow mode, and that hill descent control. What that all means is a slight difference in fuel economy between the two. This RAV4 is rated at 25 city, 33 highway, and 28 combined. That 2018 Outback is rated at 25 city, 32 highway, 28 combined. What that means is altogether the EPA rates that Outback at one less MPG on the highway compared to the RAV4. Here's your TFL top tip of this review. Now, symmetrical all-wheel drive, different kinds of modes, it's all well and good, but if you really want great snow traction or great off-roading, change your tires. It's where the tire meets the road that's by far more important than the technology that's built into this. These snow tires will take this Subaru far beyond where those all seasons will take the RAV4. If you want to go off-road, don't get a snorkel. Get a set of proper off-road tires. You'll be so much happier. So the Outback sells many, many, many units, and so does this RAV4. It used to be the Camry. Um, but, you know, they're both crossovers, and, and the tricky thing is the Outback doesn't really have any direct competition because there aren't many other lifted crossover wagons on the market, so something like this would be its direct competition, in my opinion. 
but it's, it's the ride quality is very similar. I think it drives a little bit more like a car than that does. The hood is just so much lower, so you get a lot more visibility out of the front, which I like more, which is funny because this even has more ground clearance than the Adventure trim. 0.01 of an inch, dude. It's not... Well, 0.1. Yeah, that's not like... No, know, it's not a large amount. It's the size of, like, a fat ant. Right. It's, yeah, it's a very small amount. <laughs> But overall, you know, our experience with this has been very good, uh, and I'm impressed by what Subaru has built. This being a proper TFL mashup review, while these cars start at about mid-20s, the ones we've got sitting here cost, well, $10,000 apart. This one, about $29,000. This one, $39,000. Now, keep in mind that a base Outback will get you standard all-wheel drive, while a base RAV4 won't. However, the RAV4 is also available in a hybrid, which ironically is the performance version all right tommy i figure people will cross shop these because they are each brand's most popular vehicle but if it were your money which would you get i'd get the toyota i really like the outback but the toyota is just a little bit newer i like the design more i think it's just a lot more updated yeah and on the tfl scale of buy it lease it rent it or forget it i'm gonna go barely a lease it almost a buy it if you can get past the underpowered performance definitely buy both of these and if it were my money, I'd probably go with the Subaru just because it has standard all-wheel drive on all models. As always, this is Roman. And Tommy, be sure to go back to TFLcar.com for the latest and greatest in Subaru versus Toyota mashup reviews. See you guys next time. Ciao. That was fun. We need to do some more mashups. Yep.